Okay, so last time we worked on the image upload on Xano. Just as a quick review of what we did, we created media table, we uploaded via API a one by one pixel lime green image as a test. Because of the media table, we have media endpoints. And we also created from scratch an upload image API. And this is what we used to upload our uh, test image that we just saw. So um, feel free to go back and look at that video if you need some of the details. But what we're going to do this time is the opposite side of the equation. We're going to go back to AppGyver. Um, if we look at our app, this is our profile screen. Nothing exciting happening there. It's been that way a little bit too long. We are going to upload, well, not upload yet. We're going to build out the screen so that it has an image uh, that can be selected from your image library. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We've got a default image here that it gives us. Um, we're going to go ahead and use that value as our initial value, and we're going to create an app variable. And the goal for this app variable is that um, once we do uploads and logins, um, we're going to be getting the location of that image, that URL, back. And we want to store it in a variable that's available to any portion of our application. So this will be profile image path. And sometimes I pick the wrong version. Let's uh, see what we have here in the way of types. We could just go with the straight text, and we also have some URLs, any protocol, web URL. Let's try image URL and see if uh, what we use likes that. We may have to use formulas if we have incompatible issues. Okay, so we have a profile image path. Oh, that is interesting, isn't it? Thought I just had an image up here. Let's try this again and save. Huh. Okay. And save. Okay. So I don't know what just happened there, but let's pretend it didn't and keep moving along. So here we have um, our image. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave the default value there for now. And we are going to set a default when we load the uh, app itself. Now let's go back to that portion. We are going to go to, let's say, login screen. Because this is where it automatically logs us in. We always come through this screen. I'm going to go ahead and set up some of what we'll use a little bit later. If we successfully come in, we not only want to set the app variable for the token, but we also want to set the app variable for the profile image path. And we're just going to give it an assigned value, static text. And this is the default value, if you remember, that I copied and pasted out of the image component uh, when all this starts. So let's see here. We will go ahead and set that in parallel. So these will both happen at the same time. The theory would be that by the time we get to a profile image screen, this has already been set and we should be good to go. So whenever we successfully come back in, um, it will set that app variable on login. I'm going to copy that set app variable component into the clipboard and I'm going to go to the login because we also want to do it when we successfully log in. Move that out of the way a little. So we're really just doing it in the two places where we either automatically or manually log in. And I've got that set and set. OK. So we've set up the app variable for the profile image default URL, as it is now. 
And let's go ahead and go back into our profile. And I wanna add, so we're down here in our flow logic. I've installed from the marketplace. I'm gonna go into the marketplace. Image library, there it is. Pick image from library. So that's what I've already installed, but this is the path you'd take to do it. You can see installed. If not, you would have had a green install button there. So when we're on the installed tab and we scroll down a little bit, pick image from library. What we want to do is when we tap on this image, we want to bring up the image library for your mobile device. And we request permission because almost every mobile device and operating system needs you to have the user say that it's okay for them to get access to the pictures on their mobile. And then once I have popped up the pick image from library uh, screen, which happens right with the slow function, I wanna go back to my core tab and I wanna set an app variable, which is gonna obviously be the one we were just messing with. So we come in here and pick profile image path. That's where we want to assign it to, and we're going to pick whatever is passed out of pick image from library. And just to take a look at how you can determine what you're supposed to get, when I click on pick image path, you probably remember we've been into the output tab before, and we can look at the schema of data coming out of output port one, which is the top one we've tied into. And as you can imagine, we want to use path. Now, if you notice here, the type is local file system path. And I picked, uh, I think, image URL or something like that. So we might show up as incompatible, but I am going to use a formula if that happens to work around that. And let's see if we're incompatible, just so that, and we are. So we're going to back up one to the binding, go to the formula, get rid of the double quotes that are there. And we want to pick output of another node, and we want image path. And let's see if it's happy with this approach. So now when I tap on the image, it'll pop up our image library. We'll pick an image. It'll pass that path to the app variable. And that app variable needs to be associated with <coughs> the uh, image component. There we go. And then let's go over to the style. Really don't want it to be that big of an image. So let's do 150 pixels, width and height. Um, let's make that 32 from the top. Get rid of the bottom padding for now. We can worry about that later. Zero. Oh, let's get rid of this. That's what I'm doing wrong. There we go. Custom value. I think I could pick it sooner. Or later. Oh, I see what it's doing. It's resetting it. So let's not mess with that. We'll be fine. It's not worth messing with at the moment. We're going to align it to the middle. I'm gonna save it. Sometimes, uh, as you saw, that was way taller than 150 pixels. Sometimes it doesn't refresh, but once you save, it will refresh, and that's what happened here. And then we're gonna go into image. You never know what the aspect ratio of your images are, so if you use cover, you're guaranteed that any image you use will fill the whole 150 by 150 pixel square and won't leave blank edges. So. Going from contain to cover is always an important change, especially for profile images. And then I'm more of a circle guy. So if you do a border radius that is at least half, if not greater than half of the width and height, you'll see it goes into a nice circle once we have an image in there. Um, we'll go ahead and pick a solid. And then for a color, Let's see what we had. 
Yeah, I am informative, maybe. I think informative is, is what we want. I think that's the one that we made green. Okay. So let's see if we uh, can actually get this to work in the mobile app. I think I have everything set that I need to. The one problem I was having earlier is without an image in that image component, it would bring up, there we go. We do have the image there. Uh, if you have no image to finish that sentence in an image component, then the image component disappears. Um, and that's part of the reason we're using that app variable and the default image so that you actually have the circular item here. So let's see what happens. Uh, we should, oh, uh, let's pick the coffee cup. There it is. Um, that's really all there is to being able to switch between images. I guess we could go with my dog. We'll leave my dog there. That's a prettier picture um, than a coffee cup. Okay, so what we've done in pretty short order is created an image section, centered it, put a border radius so it's circular. We created an app variable, as you'll remember, an app variable to hold the path. And we set a default value, which is important, because remember, if we don't set that default value and our app variable is empty, then our image component uh, doesn't show up, it disappears. So having whatever default image to start with so that the user can actually have a space to tap and uh, make their initial choice is important. Uh, what else did we do? I think that's probably about everything. That gets us to the point where we have um, an image available. And what we're gonna do in the next video is one of many things. As you notice, I have plans and then I change them regrettably and I apologize for that, but I get excited about one thing or another. What we'll do in the next one is attach in the API that we created and then use that to upload this base 64 image. I appreciate you spending time on this video. Looking forward to the next one when we upload a real image to your real back end.